Greetings and welcome. I'm Dr. Nielsen, founder of Nielsen Holistic. On this video, I'll be training on the microbiome. I'll also be discussing good bacteria, friendly bacteria, and probiotics. And then we'll be talking about how these probiotics and friendly bacteria inside your system are directly linked to chronic disease, which is happening out there. We know it is heart disease, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, all these autoimmune diseases, congestive heart failure, COPD, diabetes, stroke, Alzheimer's, all of them. We're going to talk about certain links and direct links to those diseases found in the gut and found in your microbiome. And then of course we're going to be talking about the bad and the good, the solutions. Won't leave you hanging. So let's talk about the microbiome. When I think about microbiome, I think about microscopic, tiny, small. Biome is an ecological community or a biological community that works in harmony. So this microbiome, it works in harmony, meaning the good, good bacteria, and from here on out I'll call it friendly bacteria. You might hear me say friendly flora. Friendly bacteria works together with our system. It assists our system in fighting off germs, in being able to digest and produce vitamins like vitamin K2, the importance of helping with calcium regulation so we don't get the blockage in the arteries. So very important, this microbiome. Here we have these, you know, in our, in our system we have, in our body, 37 trillion cells. Well, the amount of bacteria in our, in, throughout our body, on our skin, mainly in our gut, 10 times, 10 times the amount. We're talking 370 trillion organisms, microorganisms for us. They are our friends if you make them your friend. Let's talk about how they are our friends. A direct correlation, and this is phenomenal, the new research is showing, the literature is showing there is direct relationship to some chronic diseases with probiotics, meaning good bacteria, your friendly bacteria inside your microbiome, particularly Crohn's disease, the highly inflammatory disease of like irritable bowel disease. And what, what the research shows, when they took the biopsy or they took out the portion of the intestine that had the Crohn's disease, they showed that it was decreased in a certain bacteria, a friendly bacteria. And that was Fecalibacterium prausnitzi. Fecalibacterium prausnitzi, FP. So that friendly bacteria, FP, was decreased, and these people got Crohn's disease. So researchers, oh my goodness, there's a direct correlation. See, historically, the microbiome was just there, and it helped us out. But now we're seeing certain bacteria have certain, certain jobs, just like us. Somebody's a doctor, somebody's a lawyer, somebody's a plumber, somebody's a professional baseball player. All working together in a community, these bacteria, wow, these microorganisms have a certain mission, a certain job to do direct and certain things. Phenomenal, because when we look at type 1 diabetes, another study, the microbiome changed before the person got the type 1 diabetes, an autoimmune disease type 1 diabetes, we think, oh, that can be cured. Well, maybe it can be prevented then. Pretty phenomenal. And after they got it, the type 1 diabetes, the microbiome changed, meaning the bacteria changed again, the friendly bacteria. So science and research is f finding out some phenomenal things and why this is so exciting, and I love this is because we can more directly, naturally say, all right, if you're low on Fecalibacterium, let's look at giving you the, the food that will help boost or increase that particular part, portion of the colony. These are our friends. So we got to give the right friends, because some friends get along better with other friends, and certain friends do certain jobs. And that's very exciting, because now we can use probiotics as well, and fermented foods, to increase that particular probiotic and friendly bacteria. Let's talk about epigenetics. Epigenetics means epi meaning above the gene. So what we're finding, and this is a whole field, you can look it up, it's phenomenal, is that there are certain chapters in life, in our genetic code, that we're supposed to have happen, like cancer, like Crohn's disease. And historically, Crohn's disease was always just, you know, family history, you're predisposed, you're going to get it. 
But what we know in some great research by Dean Ornish, he showed that we can actually shut off certain chapters in life. Like you're predisposed to have cancer, but you can actually keep it closed. Chapter 14 is cancer chapter, and we keep it closed. By healthy eating and living, positive mental attitude, a sense of community, loving and being loved, and healthy eating real foods, like real foods that are alive, and lifestyle changes, shutting off the gene. So we know that we can actually control the gene, the genetic makeup. You can control and change your DNA. Well, what we're finding with the bacteria, the friendly bacteria, is a very similar process that, hey, we can actually shut off genes, or I should say more, prevent that bad chapter in life from happening. That is exciting. That, that makes me exciting, excited. And makes I'm getting excited, right? Because, wow, that's breakthrough. So let's talk about the bad now. All right, I know. Talk about the bad. Antibiotics. Overuse and abuse of antibiotics. I'm not against antibiotics. I'm not against hospitals. Have the record stand that I'm not. But when we're overusing and abusing them, for example, years, most pe pediatricians are on board now and they know that most of your, most of your ear infections, or in, even in JAMA, we know that a uh, sinus infection longer than two weeks is generally a virus. Most ear infections in children are viral. Yet, the, ah, oh, they were writing so many prescriptions for what? Antibiotic, antibiotic, bacteria, not viral. You've got to use something natural to be able to fight the virus. You can't just go and sleep it off. I mean, you can. But it's a lot better if you can use some natural products, some natural botanicals, homeopathic, to be able to eliminate that virus, and it works. It's phenomenal. I love the Monolaurin Max that we use. I love some of the beta-glucan. I love our immune water that we use. Phenomenal. So, long story short, doctor, my friend goes to the doctor, diagnoses that patient with a back, uh, excuse me, a viral infection, but at the end he says, um, you know, I, I could write you a prescription for an antibiotic. What? What? Really? You got to be kidding me. Shameful. That's a shame. What a pity. Seriously? That's like bloodletting. That is archaic. Please, moms, families, understand. Be careful about just taking antibiotic. It kills all the bacteria. You wouldn't kill your friends, would you? I mean, outweigh the benefit to the cost. Where else do we get a lot of antibiotics? Hand soap, antibacterial hand soap called triclosan. Look for the ingredient, eliminate it from your home. It gets built up in your fat, stays in your system, causes infertility. Triclosan, watch for it. Where else do we get antibiotics? From beef from chicken, from, you know, poultry. Because if the feedlot is using bacteria, antibiotics, we end up getting it as well and hormones, those type of things. So let's talk about what are we going to do to combat that. Be careful about the antibiotic usage. Use it very sparingly, very limited. Use natural things to be able to combat that. Of course, we have a natural regimen to be able to combat bacterial infections. We're talking tough bacterial infections. Eliminate the antibacterial soap from your home. Use natural soaps. Still works better. There's no difference. They've done the research. Scientists have shown gets them just as clean. And then, of course, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about the um, the the alcohol. You know, the I'm talking about antibacterial soap. Okay. Then the next thing, of course, is to eat organic beef, grass-fed beef, free-range. None of, no antibiotics. Also, the free-range chickens, if you can, and the eggs, so you're getting no antibiotics in them. Chloridation, next bad, chloridation and fluoridation, chlorination and fluoridation of water. Chlorine, what is, why do we put chlorine in water? To kill what? The bugs, the bacteria. Guess what it also does in your system? Kills the, you got it, you're smart. Drink filtered water. Quite simple. No, this isn't a lesson. We could talk about how it affects the thyroid as well. So chlorinated water, drink filtered water. If you can, shower in filtered water. All right. Also, let's talk about processed foods. What do processed foods do to us? Processed foods cause inflammation. Processed foods decrease the, the ability for fighting off germs, being able to digest, being able to then produce vitamins. They cause inflammation. Inflammation is like a 
a thick sludge. It's like a giant windstorm with massive amounts of debris. It's like a tornado and we can't do our job in sludge and tornadoes. We got to have clarity. We got to have clearness. So processed foods, food dyes, chemicals, those type of things are going to cause the inflammation which won't allow then your good microbiome to work optimally. Um, I want to talk about this briefly. Emotions. What do emotions do? They cause stress, they cause inflammation, same type of correlation. So you really got to eliminate the emotions that are stressful, not eliminate the emotions, eliminate the stress. Learn how to eliminate the stress. For the processed foods, you got to eliminate the processed foods. Start eating real food, food that's alive. Food that's alive, what does that mean? Hmm. Food that's alive, it has life to it. Processed foods don't have that. The last thing that I want to talk about is our sugars, sweeteners, and grains. Quite possibly the most toxic, because it's so readily acceptable, product in our society, in the, in the global community at large. Um, sugars, as we know, cause massive amounts of inflammation. Sweeteners, when I talk about grains, I'm not saying to eliminate grains completely. I'm, I'm saying eat grains sparingly. We eat way too many grains, even whole grains. I'm talking grains, all grains. Pasta are made from grains, people. Peat, uh, flour, breads are made from grains. That causes a lot of inflammation, which causes a decrease in the ability for your microbiome to function appropriately. These type of things... When you do this, connect the dots. Remember, if you're eating these type of foods, you inhibit the microbiome, which then can lead to the chronic disease, heart disease, Alzheimer's, stroke, Crohn's disease, congestive heart failure, kidney failure, and then many other different types of chronic disease. Connect the dots. Be a friend to your friend, the friendly bacteria change. You can do it. I believe in you. I'm Dr. Nielsen. I look forward to, you the to seeing you on the next training. And remember this, live in fullness every day.